Now, the Stream Deck is a powerful automation tool, and today you'll get to see five great ways to use it. I've used the Stream Deck daily for seven years, and as my needs grew, I added more types of Stream Decks, each serving different purposes. And I'll show you examples so that you can see which one suits you the best. I'm not a streamer. I just like to make things easier and quicker. I use my Stream Deck for all sorts of tasks. So you might ask, what's a Stream Deck? If you're new to the Stream Deck, it's like this special keyboard with customizable buttons. And you can set it up on your Mac or on your Windows machine. Now each button is like a mini screen where you can assign it an icon, a label or both for the action. Now you can choose to create a single action or a combination from the side panel. You can also add in plugins that gives the Stream Deck some special powers. So I created one for Notion. Links are in the description. Now once this is set up, by just pressing a button, you can open a website, an app, or control various functions like volume, lights, or monitor brightness. It can also help you write messages, edit videos, or run macros. The Stream Deck works with coding and automation tools to simplify complex tasks. You can set the Stream Deck to switch to a custom setup when you open an app, or you can control it from another Stream Deck or you can just choose to do it manually. Now I control mine from another Stream Deck. So during meetings, I need to respond to emails or chats pretty quickly without losing focus on the meeting itself. So I've come up with some pre-written responses. Now to set them up, I drag the text button from the side panel and add in my text. And when I'm on that call and I get interrupted, I can just send a message like, hey, I'm in another call, can I ping you back? Now you'll notice here that I haven't checked the press enter at the bottom so that the message won't send automatically. And that's because I'm not done yet. So if my meeting is for an hour long, I can press the ping in an hour button. And now I think I'm done, so I can just click to send it off. Now I've set up various options to respond with single clicks. Now I still need to style these buttons. And for that, I use an app called the Button Creator. It lets me design the buttons with custom text, font, icons, a custom background, and images. Now I'd like to give you one power tip. Establish some design rules, like using specific backgrounds, a chosen font, specific folder colors, and specific action colors. Now constantly navigating through apps, folders, and menus can get really tiresome. Now you might say there's this Mac dock, but that can get really crowded really soon, and you still need to move your mouse towards it. And yes, there are apps like Alfred and Raycast, but they require a lot of typing and switching between the mouse and the keyboard. I do use them, but I've also found an easier way with an app called Custom Menu 3. Now I set this up on my Stream Deck with a special key press. Now when I press that, it opens up a menu with different groups of apps. And you know what's the best part? It shows up right where your mouse is. So there's really no need to move it much and you can add many, many more apps than what your dock can traditionally fit. You can also add folders, which is really handy for frequently used files. Now, I've set this up for my video files that I use really often. Now, there are some other apps that I use along with Custom Menu. One of them is called a Word Count Pop, which allows me to count the number of words in my script. And the other one is a Grid Mask, for aligning my information, whether it's for presentations or inside my video edits. I don't know about you, but I struggle to remember so many of these keyboard shortcuts. And for every new app, I have to learn even more, which is really tough. Now I've set up my Stream Deck to control windows with just a click. I can size windows perfectly for recording videos. I also use this Stream Deck Plus with dials for some really cool stuff. Now the buttons execute one or more of a continuous sequence of actions. The dials are a little different. They perform differently depending on the direction you turn them, clockwise or anti-clockwise. Examples are to adjust the sound, the screen brightness, to moving windows to different screens. Pushing the dial triggers another task, or you can even switch this to a completely new set of dial options. That's known as as dial stack. I use the dial stack feature to record sounds from my computer, like mouse clicks or my typing on the keyboard. 
and I use that for my screen recordings. Now I pair this up with an app called Keybell, which actually helps me record these sounds for my screen recordings. And for my screen recordings, I use two apps. One is Screen Studio, or I use something else called CleanShot, which I mainly use today for screenshots, though it can still do screen recordings. What I love about CleanShot is that it provides a clean background and allows me to add text so that I can explain the screenshot better. Now, turning the dial clockwise records a video and counterclockwise takes a screenshot. Trust me, I haven't found a simpler way. So if you watch my YouTube videos, you will know that I use Notion quite a lot. Now I've made a comprehensive Notion Stream Deck plugin that's also available on my website, links are below. And in that plugin, there's a button that I use quite often. That's called Simple Language. That's under the Notion AI tools. Now this button uses Notion AI to simplify sentences when I'm writing scripts or for other writing. For those who create content of some kind, you know how crucial it is to have great titles, titles that grab attention. I made a chat GPT prompt that helps with titles and it is fairly complex. I takes a draft title and then it analyzes it with 35 key factors, helps me create three titles per key factor. That's 105 new titles, but that's not all. It scores them. It checks for impactful words, common, uncommon, emotional, and power words. And it provides me a report so that I can then choose from that for the best title or do a combination thereof. Now this gives my title a much better chance to stand out. And now to set this all up, there's just one Stream Deck button. When I press it, it brings up the Apple shortcut. It asks for that input for the draft title and then stores the whole prompt on my clipboard. Then I go into ChatGPT and with a second button, I just paste it into ChatGPT because my hand is already there and it gets to work. Now, video editing is time consuming and I often wish I had an extra pair of hands. Now, one day I noticed how musicians used foot pedals. Aha, that gave me a brilliant idea. Now, around the same time, Elgato released Stream Deck pedals. So I got two of them, one for each foot. Now I set them up for Final Cut and also my video prompter. Now you might say, hey, it's under the table, it doesn't have a screen, has only three buttons. That's true, but it's incredibly powerful. Now this three button setup on each pedal handles most of my repetitive edits. And I do these edits hundreds of times an hour without even realizing it. And both my hands are free to do other things. And using the pedals cuts my editing time by more than half. Now I also use the Stream Deck Excel with a special plugin for Final Cut Pro and I've done a lot of customizations, but that's a story for another time. Now you might say having multiple Stream Decks is very expensive, that's true, but they've significantly improved my workflow and they are much more cost effective than hiring somebody else to do the same task. And just so you know, I bought all of these Elgato products myself. There's no sponsorship involved. Hey Elgato, are you listening? Now to know more about why you need a Stream Deck, watch this video. And if you're curious about the Stream Deck Plus, the one with the dials, watch this video.